when I was a kid, my mom used to pray for me and say, Kareem, may I see you a leader one day coming with victory for Islam or a leader who is coming back death. In the Quran, we grow up with two things. First, you should give your life to God. Second, you should defeat Jews and Christians. I memorized the Quran. I memorized the Sunnah books. I did all of the responsibilities a Muslim should be doing every day. My daily life was always built and centralized around Islam. I was dreaming of that day until I got this fantastic opportunity when the Americans attacked Iraq. 2002, 2003, this was a big fight. And I said to myself, this is the moment where I will give my life to God. I was dreaming with this phone call that would come to me and this man who will help me to let me go and fight the infidels. And this call has come. And in that day, the man told me, I'm sorry, Kareem, the operation has been canceled. Bye. This call, this very sad call, the worst news I have ever received in my life. I got frustrated. I was so much frustrated. I felt that I lost everything. I felt that I'm rejected by God himself. God has rejected me. In Islam, they believe that the, the, the people who give their life to God, the martyrdom, they are called by name by God himself. So for me, I was not called. After all the prayers, after all the fastings, after all the things I have done, I'm not called. This is a disaster. I started to disappear. I'm not out like before. Until one of the leaders called me and he said, I got to know what happened, Kareem, and I want to meet you. I went to meet him and then he told me, Kareem, why you are you so sad? I said, God didn't choose me to die. And this man said a prophecy, I believe. He said, maybe because he chose you to live. I asked him, what should I do now? He said, you need to evangelize. I started to evangelize like never before. I was everywhere, even on TV. In the first days, I was getting tense uh, to, 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 to Islam. But then the problem that I was not satisfied, there was something always missed, you know, something is not there. Here was my first problem, because when I went to study with Muslim apologists, 80% of what they say is about Christians. Look how they were, look they are without hijab, look what they say, only 20% about Christianity. And this 20% was not fair academically, because when you want to interpret one verse in the Quran, you need a lot to do. You need to read Asbab al-Nuzul, the reasons, you need to read the commentators, and you read to have basic knowledge of how to interpret. But when he was interpreting the Bible, he was just saying, you know, look, Jesus here is saying this and that. It was too obvious to be true, too obvious. I said to myself, okay, now I need what I call the Christian tablet. So in another way, I want summary of the faith like doctrines tell me the doctrines we believe in one two three four so we know what is wrong with that which is easy to do and then we evangelize these christians we do da'wah to them i tried i searched around it was very hard for me to come with something that i can understand or can grasp until i started to be frustrated by the end of many weeks i started to talk to god like god you don't want to help me here i need help until one day, I was sitting on my computer and a dial-up advertising came up, you know, and the time of dial-up before Wi-Fi came up. And it was written on it, do you love Allah? I clicked it. I thought it's a Muslim website because they write Allah, you know, Allah is a Muslim word. But I found out that it's a Christian website. It speaks from Genesis till Jesus arrived to earth and resurrected passing by the most central prophets in the Bible. 
like Noah, Abraham. This was amazing. To the extent that over the first time in my life, I looked and I said, maybe we are wrong? This is kind of impossible for Salafi to say so. But maybe we are wrong. But who said that God exists? And I started to see that I don't have any evidence for anything. I don't have evidence for Islam. I don't have evidence, enough evidence for God himself. Which led me to atheism. And I, when I was atheist, I did everything you can imagine. And then I was so tired because I started to feel that atheism is not an alternative. And inside me, I feel that there is a God. And I deal with myself as if there is a God that I talk to inside me. Until one day, I was fed up. I came back home, many problems, many things that I cannot bear myself. And I looked at the sky and I said, you know what? You are so big for me. I cannot find you. Please do something. I'm too small for you. Just do something and find me. It's not hard for you if you are there. On this night, I slept. And in my dreams, I saw that I'm running in a very long road. A lot of tree branches full of thorns chasing me want to kill me. And at the end of the road, there were a man that I do not recognize. And I, I, I shouted, please help me do something. He just extended his hand, put his hand on my shoulder and brought me before him. And once he looked at me, I found out that this is Jesus Christ. And he looked deep in my eyes and he said, it's your time to follow me. I woke up on my dreams and I said to myself, okay, this is hallucinations, you know? This is hallucinations. I think that um, it's not true. Why Jesus come to me, you know? But in the next night, I got the same dream, the same details. I looked up to the, to the sky, to the heavens once I woke up and I said, you know what? This is, this is, this is not a joke here. I challenge you, if you can come to me one more time with the same details, otherwise I will not think of you again. I thought that he would never come, but he came. And this time he looked deep in my eyes and he said, didn't I tell you, didn't I tell you, it's your time to follow me. I woke up while I cannot believe that this is true. I cannot believe that God is so loving. God is so amazing. God is, God is so open. He didn't care that I'm challenging him. He was not feeling attacked. He was not feeling insulted. He was feeling that I love this guy and I want him. So he just came to me. I didn't woke up as a Christian, but I woke up as a man who is seeking the truth and knowing one thing that this Jesus Christ is more than a prophet. This Jesus Christ is not what we think that he is. I was lucky to find someone to help me with that. And after three years, I got baptized in the name of Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And the thing is, since I was baptized, everything started to change every look started to change. I started to see people differently. For the first time of my life, I started to learn that I can love others unconditionally. We traveled somewhere in another country due to the persecution we, we had, and uh, it was not easy for us. But what happened abroad was so unique. I got invitation from one of the associations that work in the synagogue. I accepted the invitation and I went for the first time in one of the halls of the synagogue. I was invited to be a keynote speaker in one of the events to speak about um, my testimony and what happened with me. So I said to them, for the first time, 
I can tell you, God healed me and I can say that I love you. I love you. God is love and He poured His love in our hearts. He poured His love in our hearts. And this is what we learned. Amen.